Hello everyone, Chris here, and today we're going to take a look at creating a resume inside of Google Docs. As always, if you want to support the tutorials, you can do so at patreon.com slash christutorials. The simplest way to create a resume inside of Google Docs is going to be to use one of their templates, of course. Whenever you go to docs.google.com, you're going to see this list of templates pop up, but there's a lot more that you have access to. If you hit more, you can see that there's actually four types of resume templates, and they're pretty much going to serve the same purpose, though the layout and the color design is a little bit different on each of them. For this example, I'm going to go ahead and choose the Swiss resume. Whenever you're creating a resume, you should be trying to create a list of accomplishments that you have done that go ahead and show your value as a potential employee to whoever may be looking at your resume. Since a resume is a document all about you, it's standard protocol for the top of the resume to have information pertaining to who you are and how they can get in contact with you. You can see in this template, they've gone ahead and put your name, in this case it says Casey Baumer, but you can turn it into whatever you need to uh, just by selecting it and typing the name. So you could say Chris's tutorials or something like that, but you should really use a real name whenever you're using a resume. Below that you have your job title. Now this could be the job you're looking to have or it could be your current job title. If you do have a current job title, uh, more than likely you're going to want to go ahead and use that. Over here to the right you have your name once again and you have the address that you are currently living at. The reason you would use your own address and not your workplace address is because to a potential employer, what matters to them is what kind of distance is there going to be between the workplace and your residence. Is it going to take 50 minutes for you to actually drive out there? Or are you actually across the country and you're doing a over Skype resume interview? Or do you live local to the downtown area and the workplace that you're applying to is literally a block away? Below that we have your telephone number which of course starts with an area code and your email. These days having an email is pretty much standard protocol. It's a good idea to include that on your resume so that companies can contact you via email. It's just the simplest way. Oftentimes they'll give you a phone call but sometimes especially with follow-ups an email is good as well. So I would include both of those on your resume if you're going to go ahead and write one. Now below the header section, you have these different areas where you're telling a potential employer or whoever's going to be looking at your resume about all of your accomplishments. These don't actually have to be in the order they've presented here, skills, experience, education, and awards. Generally, a rule of the thumb is whatever you think is most important or shows you off the best, goes towards the top. Many resumes would also have a line around here at the top for your objective. What is your purpose? What are you trying to do with your resume? Is your purpose to acquire a job? And if it is, what kind of job you're looking for? The clearer you can make that to the reader, the easier it's going to be for them to understand who you are and what you're looking for. So down here we have the skills section, which is where you talk about the different abilities you have. Now, some people do this where they just list 10 or 12 different things, like if you're a developer of software, oh, my skills are Java, C++, and JavaScript. But just listing different skills doesn't really tell your employer anything, so you may actually want to add a few more details on like how long you've been working with a certain skill or what you have actually accomplished with the skill. But definitely don't write anything on your resume that you can't back up with words. If you say that you are an expert in anything, you should expect them to ask about your expertise in it because they're going to be hiring you for those potential skills. And then if you get into the interview and they find out that you're lying about that, it just won't go over very well and you won't be too likely to get the job. Now, you'll see here that in this specific template, they wrote it as sentences followed by more sentences. Personally, I like to make these bulleted points. So what I would do here is separate this into three different paragraphs by hitting the enter button, separated at the period, and then I would go up here to bulleted list, hit bulleted list, and change them into bullets. I just feel that's a lot cleaner to read, but it's up to you how you want to do it. The experience section is definitely going to be one of the most important sections on your resume, regardless of how many you have. 
And there's a good reason for that. Employers really value experience. Having a degree is all well and good, but if you have five years of professional experience, that often means a lot more than just being fresh out of college with a four-year degree. So here we're going to be listing the names of the companies you are working for from the latest one to the oldest one. And you don't have to list every single company. Often the last three is plenty. And then the job title you held working at that company, if it changed, then it would be the latest job title or the highest ranking job title you held at that company. Below that, we have the starting date that you worked there to the ending date that you worked there. And if you still have a job there, you would just say present. And what's the location? They're mostly looking at possibly city and state if you look in the US. Below that, you're going to be talking about the different responsibilities that you held at the company. And what I recommend that you do, as many other people would, is actually churn your statements into actions. So instead of just listing things, actually talk about what you achieved there and what you did for the company, because any employer wants to know what you can do for them. So if your responsibility was to be on the floor selling goods, then talk about the sales numbers you were able to achieve within a given year. Or you could talk about how you took new employees and trained them to bring them up to speed without requiring too much management supervision. With each of these statements, I would say keep them to one full sentence and then move on to your next topic, your next responsibility, and your next achievement that you did within each company. Keep in mind, though, that you don't need to write everything. Just keep it to the highlights. That's what we're focusing on here. You can see that this resume template is one page. Not every resume needs to be one page. It's often a nicety, but professional resumes can often be two pages and sometimes even three. But keeping that in mind, two or three pages is not enough to tell your life story. So we're really focusing on highlights here. Down here at the bottom of this template, we have education. And that's going to be talking about the schools you attended and the degree you received or are currently working on the dates you attended that school, and the location of the school. With the following paragraph of text, you can talk about what you achieved at the school, what you were trying to study, where your credits lie, maybe highlight some of the more important classes if you think that's relevant. But once again, do try to keep it pretty short. Now this last section on the page is awards, and this would be talking about the things that you've achieved outside of your workplace necessarily, or outside of the everyday educational school routine. So for instance, if you had became an Eagle Scout while you were with the Boy Scouts, that might be an award you actually want to put on your resume. But even better would be if you actually did something that was highly relevant to the field you're going into. So let's say you graduated with a degree in science and you won a science competition in college, one that was actually meaningful, then that's something you definitely want to write there. Anything that you think is going to impress your employer and give you a better shot at getting a job, maybe gives you a chance to tell them about your stories and how awesome you were while you were doing this certain project out there, that would be good things to write there. Now, another option for a section you could have here, it doesn't have to be awards. If you're in the IT industry, might be certifications. So if you went ahead and got an MCSE, a Microsoft Certified Solutions Expert certification, and you're applying for a network administrator job, you better have that on your resume because employees are actually going to be looking at that kind of thing. In fact, some employers actually require certifications. But once again, that really depends on what field you're going into. Certifications are really big in IT and possibly some skilled trades, but they may not be incredibly relevant to your field directly. So what I would recommend is that when you're writing your resume, you go ahead and do some research, find out what your employers or, or your prospective employers are going to be looking for, and try to get as much of that information as possible within your resume. If you need more space, you can always expand this to two pages. You can always add in an extra section if you think it's relevant, such as putting an objective at the top of the page. It's up to you. This is one template you can use. But as you saw, there are several other resume templates inside of Google Docs, and it's definitely possible to do resumes inside of Google Docs. So good luck if you're gonna be making a resume and applying for a job. Thank you for watching my video. I've been Chris and I will see you in my next video.